Every time a space rocket takes its payload into the skies, a story unfolds in orbit, one that we're rarely told. The Boeing X-37 is one such mystery space worker whose mission remains a shrouded one. We know that it comes back again and again and also completes tasks regularly, but which ones exactly? Some see it as a platform for experimentation, others as an instrument of military superiority. Let's find out which of these sides is closer to the truth. Despite the debut of the experimental North American X-15 back in the late 1950s, space planes are still perceived by society as a new technology. However, why be surprised if to this day only six space planes have ever successfully flown into outer space and returned to the Earth's atmosphere with a safe landing? The idea of going into space was especially attractive to the U.S. Air Force. After all, the aerospace field was considered nothing more than an expansion of air operations near the Earth. Yes, pilots even then expected to fly and fight in space. Of course, aerodynamics were not applicable in such distant places, but the hard vacuum was already a thousand miles away. This meant that the pilots had enough work assignments in low Earth orbit, 60 to 300 miles above the Earth. In his speech to Congress, General Thomas D. White, Air Force Chief of Staff in 1959, stated, We foresee that we are not only going to have manned bombers and missiles, but that eventually we'll have manned space vehicles as combat weapons in the future. Simply put, it became clear to the general that airplanes would soon turn into winged spaceships. Additionally, the range of military interests in space is almost limitless. The study of weather conditions, early warning of threats, communications, surveillance and reconnaissance, navigation are just a few examples of issues solved in the vastness of this lifeless vacuum. And before we can understand how we ended up in a timeline where the private sector began to rapidly overtake serious government-funded space projects, let's first figure out what exactly space planes are. A space plane is a vehicle capable of flying like an airplane in the atmosphere, generating lift with its wings, and like a spaceship in a vacuum using rocket propulsion. However, the defining characteristic of these space planes is repeated flight, a feat better known as Single Stage to Orbit, or SSTO, in which the craft reaches orbit from the surface of the body using only propellants and fluids and without expending tanks, engines, or other major hardware. Space plane concepts have, from their inception, put forward an impressive set of general requirements. This autonomous single-stage vehicle uses air-breathing engines to maneuver through the atmosphere and accelerate to satellite speed (18,000 miles per hour, and must carry enough fuel into orbit for navigation in space or be able to acquire this fuel as it moves through orbit in the upper atmosphere. Not to mention the obvious ability of its body and electronics to withstand the extreme heat of entering the atmosphere maneuvering through it at very high speeds, and landing with the engine at relatively low speeds while returning to the surface of the Earth at any of the airfields designated by the command post. Despite many ideas, prototypes, and experimental flights of varying degrees of success, only two space planes were put into service, the legendary Space Shuttle and the top-secret Boeing X-37B. Other nation-states also tried to launch reusable space planes, in 1988, the USSR sought to surpass, or at least repeat, the success of the American Space Shuttle, whose first orbital spaceflight occurred back in 1981. The Soviets designed and launched their reusable Buran spacecraft, but in the end, it was the first and only flight of the most expensive project in the history of the Red Cosmonauts. In 2007, China test launched its own reusable experimental spacecraft, Shenlong, or Divine Dragon, from 2020 to 2023, the Chinese have already conducted three missions with a total length of 544 days. And in the same 2023, Shenlong launched six unidentified objects emitting signals into low Earth orbit. The main enemy of space planes is that their development requires very deep pockets. That's why Europe, the USSR, and later the Russian Federation abandoned the concept. And the growing competition with SpaceX also adds fuel to the fire. It's difficult to motivate the government and investors to invest billions of dollars in expensive space plane research when a private company is doing an excellent job of making access to space as cheap as possible. 
However, NASA, Boeing, and the U.S. Air Force apparently have no intentions to give up seeding all the laurels to SpaceX. They've created at least three modifications of their reusable robotic spacecraft X-37 or Orbital Test Vehicle OTV. NASA developed the concept of a small unmanned space plane in the mid-1990s, while the U.S. Air Force was planning a similar vehicle, the Space Maneuver Vehicle. Boeing was eventually tasked with building one X-40A test aircraft for the Air Force in partnership with their own research laboratory, which was intended only to test autonomous guidance and navigation systems. It was even designed without a propulsion system or thermal protection systems. After its first drop test in 1998, the X-40A was handed over to NASA. They modified it and carried out seven more approach and landing test flights at NASA's Dryden, now Armstrong, Flight Research Center in Edwards, California. The successful completion of all tests only strengthened NASA's confidence in the need to develop two more devices, Approach Landing Test Vehicle, ALTV, Orbital Vehicle, OV. The X-37 began as a project for NASA to explore a cheaper alternative to the space shuttle because it was proving to be much more maintenance-intensive than originally anticipated. Not only was the device not able to reduce the cost of delivering a payload into orbit, but it also required months of recovery between flights. In 1999, the agency selected Boeing Integrated Defense Systems to design and develop the orbital vehicle, which was subsequently built by Boeing's California subsidiary, PhantomWorks. The same team previously worked on the famous stealth prototype Bird of Prey and dozens of other experimental reconnaissance vehicles. Even their logo literally screams maximum secrecy. Over the four-year production period, the X-37 ate up more than $192 million, of which NASA allocated $109 million, Boeing $67 million, with another $16 million provided by the U.S. Air Force. When funding began to wane, Boeing was able to secure a new $301 million contract under NASA's Space Launch Initiative and continue active development. However, in 2004, the civilian space agency decided that the unmanned space plane didn't directly support NASA's goals for exploration and forced the agency to hand over control of the X-37 project to the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, after which the program became secret due to potential military use. DARPA rolled out the test ALTV, or X-37A, used as an airframe for atmospheric drop tests. It had no engines, but instead an operational vehicle's payload bay doors had a closed and reinforced upper fuselage structure allowing the X-37A to mate with the mothership. The high-altitude research jet-scaled composites Model 318 White Knight was chosen as the test carrier. From June 2005 to September 2006, the device successfully completed all assigned tasks as part of the inspections and even managed to undergo repairs after it rolled off the runway during landing in April of 2006, receiving minor damage. In November of that same year, the U.S. Air Force began developing its modification of the X-37A from NASA, designed to stay in orbit for 270 days at a time. This version was designated the X-37B Orbital Test Vehicle, and Boeing was again chosen as the main contractor. Almost everything that's known about the activities of the X-37B project has been classified. Officially, the Air Force describes the project as an experimental test program to demonstrate technologies for a reliable, reusable, uncrewed space test platform for the U.S. Air Force, but in reality, its main goals sound extremely twofold – reusable spacecraft technology and operating experiments which can be returned to Earth. These include testing of avionics, flight and navigation systems, thermal protection, insulation, thrust, and systems responsible for re-entry. Of course, many did not believe in such good intentions. Therefore, from the moment of the first launch of OTV-1 in April 2010 to this day, the media from time to time has been covered by waves of assumptions and speculation about the real purpose of the X-37. A spy satellite, a device for delivering weapons from space, a base for testing the electromagnetic microwave engine M-Drive, the least of what the newspapers have attributed to the X-37. If when you saw the X-37 you thought it was the twin brother of the space shuttle, you were not too far off. With its bullet-shaped form, stubby wings, and monochrome appearance, 
the X-37B orbital test vehicle truly resembles a smaller, slightly cleaner version of the legendary orbiter that served NASA for decades. The X-37 OTV is a derivative of the same Boeing X-40 on a slightly larger scale, about 120%, more than 29 feet long, only 9 feet 6 inches tall, with two corner tail fins and a launch weight of 11,000 pounds excluding the missile carrier. Its wingspan is also, to put it mildly, not even up to modern fighters, only 14 feet 11 inches. An early goal of the X-37 program was to rendezvous with satellites and perform repairs, and the space plane itself was designed to be launched into orbit in the cargo bay of the space shuttle. Yes, it was literally a mini-shuttle within a shuttle. However, after realizing the high cost of such an undertaking, the X-37 was quickly converted to launch using a disposable Delta IV launch rocket or similar ones. Granted, as a result, it was launched on Atlas V-501 rockets as well as Falcon 9 and Falcon Heavy carriers from the well-known SpaceX. The space planes designed to operate at speeds of up to Mach 25 upon re-entry, and among the OTV's top requirements was a Delta V speed of 7,000 miles per hour for orbital maneuvers. While they intended to reduce the insane cost of the X-37B by completely eliminating crews, which meant getting rid of living quarters for them and life support systems. Such an unmanned space plane would not only be much smaller in size than a manned one, requiring less thrust and a smaller rocket to launch into space, but it could also spend weeks, months, or even years in low Earth orbit as part of its mission before returning to Earth. The X-37B received an improved thermal protection system based on the experience of previous generations of spacecraft re-entering the atmosphere, including heat-resistant silicon ceramic tiles. The X-37 for NASA was supposed to be equipped with one Aerojet AR-23 engine using storable propellants, providing 6,600 pound-feet of thrust. To this end, certification was obtained for use on the X-37B with fuel based on hydrogen peroxide JP8, but it was soon replaced by a hypergolic nitrogen tetroxide hydrazine propulsion system. The space plane has engines for maneuvering in orbit and deorbiting, but does not have engines for traveling long distances in space or for flying through the atmosphere. The X-37B is powered by gallium arsenide solar cells with lithium-ion batteries. After returning from orbit, the X-37 will automatically land at the designated location, making it the third reusable spacecraft to have this capability, after the Space Shuttle and Buran. Still, the Space Shuttle never utilized the option for automatic landing during its operation, and the Buran was a one-time adventure. During their careers, the two operational X-37Bs have already completed six successful orbital missions, spending an insane 3,774.4 days in space, equivalent to 10.34 years. The OTV-7 mission, launched on December 29, 2023, is already at 340 days. In the course of this mission, the X-37B was launched for the first time on a Falcon Heavy rocket, and the space plane itself became the first such vehicle launched beyond low Earth orbit to highly elliptical HEO orbit. As for the formulation of the flight problem, it sounds like the following. Experimenting with future space domain awareness technologies and investigating the radiation effects of materials provided by NASA. What's more interesting is that the X-37B is mentioned as a component of an emerging Space Force orbital warfare remit while we're unlikely to get any details on this, the mission is part of Space Delta 9, a unit that monitors potentially hostile activity in space and deters threats, even eliminating them if need be. Speaking about assumptions about the real military potential of the X-37B, some experts have argued heatedly that the secret mission of this space plane was to test the capabilities and need of the U.S. Army to have a space bomber. The fact is that being an unmanned pickup truck to the stars, the X-37B has enough space to accommodate a W-80 thermonuclear warhead. Given the technical modifications that would need to be made to a tactical nuclear device, the process could be too cumbersome. But this does not exclude the practical potential benefits of such an occasion. Moreover, the feature of the X-37B in this case could be its orbital maneuvering. The fact is that ground-based nuclear weapons involve moving towards targets along the most efficient route, 
Since the USA and the Russian Federation are countries of the Northern Hemisphere, the shortest and most effective route for their nuclear weapons would run from the North through the Arctic Circle and the North Pole. For the same reason, the lion's share of Russian early warning radar detection systems are directed to the North. The X-37B, being a space plane, would not be locked into any particular trajectory as the American Intercontinental Ballistic Missile ICBM force is when launched. So as space planes develop, in the event of a full-scale conflict, the U.S. Space Force could very well maneuver with nuclear weapons aboard the X-37B to attack the enemy from the trajectory of the South Pole. But still, we do hope that precipitation around the world will remain exclusively natural and not nuclear and that spacecraft will remain research vehicles moving humanity to the stars instead of destruction. You think the X-37B will become a fundamental element in the militarization of space, or has it already become one? Be sure to share your guesses with us in the comments. Also, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so you never miss a new release. Until next time!